airport. He wouldn't promise. Cheer up, team. Look on the bright side. We could be going to live on the moon. Couldn't be as bad as the Australian outback. That's enough, both of you. Mom, do we have to walk so fast? Yes. How come? We have lots of time. I already missed one plane. Oh, because of me. Why don't you just say it? Tina, I am not in the mood. Don't fight, Mom. I'm not going. What? I'll be all right. I can stay with Billy. Tina, I am not putting up with any more of your nonsense. I'll pick up those bags. No. Mom, you've never hit us before. Maybe it's been my mistake, Marty. I'm scared. Me too. Let us know if your mom changes her mind and decides to come back. We won't look for a new guitarist. Sure. Well, anyways, this phone from all of us. It's from the band. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. You have an onward booking to Glenwara. Where's that? Question. I looked it up on the map. So did I. And there it was, Lara Pinta on the map of Australia. It's Aboriginal. Is it? Well, I figure as long as you're on the map, you probably won't get lost, right? Hey, when you've got 2,000 square miles of your very own, you can get lost in your own backyard. Kate, your new home is bigger than L.A.? Oh, no, it can't be. Well, without the people? <laughs> so tell me, how do you feel? Optimistic. Okay, everybody, picture time. Come on. Like just that. one, just one. Look. All right, bunch together. Get a little more in. Get a little more in. All right. Would you at least pretend you're happy? Okay. One, two, three. Oh, I forgot I embraced it. I smiled. But it looked like I'm out of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You mad at me? Am I still your best friend? <laughs> Flight 12, now departing through gate one, two, three. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, it's me. Fire, man. Tony? <laughs> Tina? Marty? Right. <laughs> Table eight, male Caucasian, early to mid forties, alone, can't take his eyes off you. Did you ever give him? No. He's really kind of cute, you know. I think he's from out of town. And he's in your section. Cover for me. I have to phone home. I will if you can get Dr. Peterson to take Danny in this week before his second teeth fall out. Try it. I swear to God, the way that kid eats candy, he'll be the only twelve-year-old on the block with dentures. I'll try. Thank you. Marty, did I wake you? No, Mom. I was watching TV. Marty, what did I tell you about watching TV so late? You have school tomorrow. Okay. Where's Tina? Why? She's in bed. I want to talk to her. Would you get her, please? Actually, she's at Billy's place. Then don't lie to me, Marty. Now, you can call Billy's place and tell her I want her home now. Okay. Tell her I'm very angry, Marty. And I'll be home soon. And I expect to find you both asleep when I get there. We'll talk about this in the morning. bad? Well, you would go and have two kids. Aw, uh hon. -huh. You expect kids to do what you ask them to do if you're never with them. Don't reassure them. You know what the answer is, Judy? Here. Table eight. Oh, 
Crispy sandwich? Yeah, thank you. That was fast. I ordered my tea. Tea? If you've got it. That's tea with milk? Yeah. English? Uh, sorry. Australian. What have you got? It's fine. <laughs> no, are you an Australian? Oh, yes, I am. I'm here visiting my sister. She lives in Malibu. She's married to an American. A lot of Australians through here. I notice you don't wear a wedding ring. The service is fast. LA may be fast. I'm not. I'm sorry. I apologize. That was clumsy. I'm a little out of practice. Bring you your tea. That's a pretty woman. Hello again. I'm Tom Hannon. You're Kate Edmondson. I asked your friend. There's a lot of strange types about. I thought I'd wait and walk you to your car. It's uh, being repaired. Forty-three years old. My wife died five years ago. I have two daughters. I breed cattle on my own place, 250 miles southwest of Alice Springs in Central Australia. I'm going home in a few days, but in the meantime, I'd be very grateful if you company. Look, I'm not the kind of man that puts the hard word on a woman the first night he takes her out, so you've got nothing to fear on that score. It's just that well, I haven't seen much of California since I've been here. And, well, anyway, I thought you might like to think about it. word on somebody. You mean what I think it does? Yeah, probably. I must be crazy. I'm divorced. I have two children also. A girl 15, a boy 13. I'm a dental receptionist during the day and I wait tables three nights a week. So, as you can see, I don't have much time for socializing. If I go out with you, just what do you expect from me? Be up to you, Kate. Oh, you have to teach me some more Australian expressions. <laughs> of course I will. Tomorrow? Actually, I live over there. Apartment 12. I'll be right at 9.30. friend. I'm going to marry that girl. Got it. Another world, I'm busy, I'm busy, dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. 
Raw fish, huh? Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, different. <laughs> Don't you have sushi bars in Australia? Well, not in Glenmora. I've got a fish shop, though, where they wrap the fish and ships in the newspaper. Newspaper? Yeah, nothing like it. A little salt, some vinegar. <laughs> think you'll give it a miss? Yeah, I think I will. <laughs> Kate, I really appreciate you taking time off from work like this. I know what it's like when you've got kids to think about. I don't do it very often. I'm having a nice time. Real beaut. Fair dinkum. What? Fair dinkum. What is that? That means, um, are you telling the truth? Uh, is it real? I mean, this is fair dinkum sushi. You're kidding. <laughs> I thought you spoke English in Australia. Oh, it's a whole different language. Just like here. Hey, don't you knock America. Eat. Kate, any chance of meeting your kids? Great. <laughs> Tina's a camera freak, Tom. She's already won two photographic competitions. Party. Oh, that's wonderful. I like it, school. Still, it's something to be proud of. Tom, some more? Oh, Kate, I don't think I could. Thank you. It's the best meal I've had since I've been in California. Tom, were you born at La Pinta? Yes, I was, Marty. And my father and his father before him. Now I'm two girls. That's four generations of us. I saw a movie on TV once. It was shot in the outback. I think they call it The Last Frontier, right? Yeah, some call it that. Those are my girls. That's Zoe. She's 15. Tom, they're very pretty. And the little one pulling her face. That's <laughs> Emma. She's just 11. I suppose they've been riding horses since they were babies. Mm -hmm. Must be very proud of them. Yeah, you could say that. Do they have koala bears where you live? I'm afraid not. Zoe's kind of cute. The voice of innocence. That'll do. You're blushing. Tom, do you know In Excess? How about Air Supply? They're rock bands. Oh, I'm afraid of a bit of a swear, buddy. Or shake. Hold it. This one's to cement American Australian relations. Tina. Last one, I promise. Come on, closer. Closer, closer. Great. Tom, thanks for not making us do the dishes. My pleasure. Okay, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Bye, Bye. Bye. Have a good time. Really nice kids, Kate. You've done a terrific job. I get so afraid for them sometimes. I never really had a father. He left right after Marty was born. Tom, tell me about your wife. What was she like? Well, she wasn't the feminist kind, but more the old-fashioned kind. I reckon it's a sad house where the hen crows louder than the rooster. Yes, that makes me a bit of a chauvinist. But I like a woman to need me. There's a rightness to it. I love you, Kate. Will you marry me? I don't want to rush you, but I have to be home by the end of the month. And... Will you think about it? Let me know if I should put three extra seats on the plane. sort of ring to it. <laughs> Tom asked me to marry him. I know it's sudden. For me, too. But I think deep down I wanted it to happen. He's a wonderful man. And he likes you both very much, he told me. Oh, it's gonna be fine. I promise. It's a chance for a whole new life for the three of us. How do you mean? We'll be going to Australia to live at Tom's cattle ranch. For the next few years, anyway. But when you're older, you can come back to the States if that's what you want. 
Why doesn't he just come out here? He could buy a ranch out here. Yeah. I wouldn't ask him to do that. I wouldn't expect it. But why do you have to marry him? I mean, can't you just see each other? You could go and visit him. You didn't have to marry that guy, Alan. That was different, Marty. You mean with Alan, it was just sex? It was a little more than that. When you're older, you'll understand. Well, come on, it's not so terrible, is it? Well, imagine we're taking off on a great adventure into the unknown. Anyway, you, you'll get used to the idea. I know you will. You just need a little time. Do you really know what my brother's getting you into? I'm an American now. But I was born in Lara Pinta, like Tom. I know what I'm talking about. It's such a vast wilderness out there. Only the strongest survive. And it's hard on women, very hard. The isolation, the loneliness really get to you. Then there are snakes, dingoes, all the other natural hazards that come with the territory. They're in the middle of the worst drought in living memory in Central Australia right now. Hasn't rained in four years. Cattle dying every day. So Tom flew over here to borrow $200,000 from Frank and me so he can drill more wells. Because without water, he's not going to survive. I gather Tom hasn't told you this. No. But I'm sure he will when he's ready. You don't want me to marry Tom, do you? It's all happened far too fast for my liking. Look, Kate, I'm sorry, but I'm up to here trying to plan a trip, and Tom breezes in to borrow money, and now this. Holly, I can understand how you feel. But I happen to love Tom, and nothing you can say will make me change my mind. Since Kate and Tom have here agreed in your presence and have pledged their faith to each other by the authority vested in me by the state of California, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations. You may kiss the bride. Sleeping next to you, Tom Hannon. Time to shake a leg, Mrs. Hannon. This is the big day. Oh, I was awake for hours wondering if I packed everything. Uh-uh. To the future. I'll drink to that. I want you to love the outback like I do, Kate. It's got a sort of magic. The land's a living thing. You can hear its heart beating. And at night, you wouldn't believe there could be so many stars in heaven. Time doesn't exist anymore. I want to love it, Tom. I really do.
lady, you have lousy timing. Mom! How could you do something like this? It's different for you. I'm leaving all of my friends. I'm never going to see them again. You'll make new friends. I don't want to make new friends. You don't understand. Of course I do. Don't you think I know what you're both going through? Hey, it's not all for me, you know. It's for you and Marty, too. I want us to be a real family for the first time in our lives. All I'm asking is that you give it a chance. Please. Don't worry, Kate. I've rebooked you and the children for next week. Think of it this way. Me going on ahead gives me a chance to break the news to my girls. Get them used to the idea before you and your children arrive. Hmm? Gives us a bit more time to sort things out with our kids. Oh, stop worrying. I will be at Sydney Airport one week from today with the biggest bunch of flowers I can find. That, Mrs. Hannon, is a promise. Ladies and gentlemen, we will soon be starting our descent into Sydney and should have you at the terminal in about 20 minutes. On behalf of the captain and crew, we thank you for flying with us and look forward to you flying with us again. Be landing. But there should be someone there. Mr. Hannon's daughters. Mom, why don't we just stay put? He'll turn up. Yeah, we could stay here in Sydney. We can. Our tickets are just done warm. Sorry. Well, it could be out of order. No, I checked. It's fine. All right. Thank you. Maybe he just got the wrong day. No. Maybe we should go back to the States. Tom's not here. We have to keep going. We don't have any choice.
We're here. Excuse me. I have to get to Lara Pinta before dark. The uh, gentleman who drove us said to see a man, a, a charter pilot called Nick Stenning. You'd be joking, wouldn't you? What? You won't get a Stenning to take you to Lara Pinta. Why not? Because there's been a feud between the Hammonds and the Stennings for donkey's years. A feud? F-E-U-D? Yep. Is there anyone else? Not till tomorrow. How do I find Mr. Stenning? You'll find him on top of the hill outside. He's often up there. I'm bugger if I know why. Because the Stennings are all themselves around here. They own this pub. They damn near own the town. Bet you five dollars he says no. If you're thinking of going after him, I'd wait. Just a little later. Till it's cool. Buffalo hunters. I don't know they had buffalo here. They say there's thousands of them up north. I'm hungry. You're always hungry. Did you find out where the pilot is? Up there. Mr. Stenning must be a nut. What? Nothing. Can I come with you? No, honey, you stay with your sister. Hell must be like this. Just as hot I've been. I wander too far. Good luck. Stand right there. Do something cute.
Are you next, Danny? Why? I have to get to Lara Pinta before dark. My, my children and I. I was told you have a helicopter for hire. Sorry. Find someone else. Oh. Look, I don't care about your stupid feud. It's no concern of mine. I've traveled halfway around the world with my children. To the ends of the earth, and I'm tired. Too tired for you to say no to me after I've climbed this, this hill in this stinking heat to find you. And I'll be damned if I'll accept it. Now, my kids and I have to get to Lara Pinta. Not tomorrow, tonight. Do you hear me? Tonight, Mr. Stenning. And hopefully before it gets dark. So do you mind telling me just what the hell you expect doing about it? And don't you dare tell me no again. Just don't you bloody dare! So what's your connection with Tom Hanlon? I'm his wife. Be at the airport in an hour with your baggage. And don't be late. Thanks. Five dollars. Thank you. Next time, my shout. See ya. Sign the body cries. Seatbelt on. Sure. Bother, Mr. Stenning Marty. We'll find out all we need to know from Tom. Pinta? This is the Hannon place. Looks a bit quiet. Well, that won't be necessary. It's no trouble. We'll manage. Perhaps you'd like to count it. You have an honest face. I don't like you, Mr. Stenning. I hope we don't meet again.
Marty, try and find a light switch. I knew it would be like this. Hey, Mom, I found one. Oh, that's right. Tom said they have a generator for electricity. Here's a lamp. But we need matches. Oh, there's no one here. Well, there's a perfectly good explanation. What is this? It's an old stove. You burn wood in it. My God, people still use stuff like that? Out here they do. So I'm in no mood to tangle with that generator until Tom gets back. Any cooking will have to be down our old Bertha there. Why don't you guys go out and find some wood? There must be a wood heap or something close by the house. Sure, Mom. Come on, team. I'll go take a look at that old generator anyway. It's getting dark out there. Take the lamp. But leave the matches. You're late. I was summoned. Why? Dad can tell you. Welcome home, Nick. How you been? I would have thought your spies would keep you well enough informed. Cheers. I'm about to buy another piece of property. I would have thought you earned enough of the country already. This is different. Oh, yeah. Who's the victim? I want you back. To work the place. The future's here, Nick. It always was. Gallivanting around the outback in a helicopter is no future for a son of mine. Oh, this fatherly concern is a little out of character, isn't it, mate? Well, don't blame me for the years you've wasted. Your own decision, not mine. And of course, you had nothing to do with it. I was hoping it'd change. Have you? Look, I didn't bring you here to rake over old ground. There's been enough of that. The past is dead. It's the future I'm concerned about. There, a lifetime dream about to be realized. Lara Pinta. All stunning land. A kingdom your grandfather and I created. And now, Lara Pinta will be part of it. Look, let me show you something. I have my own water survey done. Under Hannon Land, an entire lake, 
all the water we've ever needed. This drought is killing me. But Lara Pinta means new life. Well, not interested. You're a fool, Nick. Land grabbing is not my style. Give it to Meg. She's the son you always wanted. You don't understand what's happened. Don't come back, Nick. We don't need you. Trust you, Tom Annan. Emma and Zoe. Well, where's Tom? We missed each other at the airport. Who are you? Okay. Uh, there's a bit of confusion here somewhere. I'm Deidre Shackleton, Tom's neighbour. The girls were staying with Ralph and me while Tom was in America. It's obvious you haven't heard. Tom's dead. It was a shock to everyone. He rang from the airport saying he was on his way. Had a surprise for us all. Flying his own Cessna. When he hadn't turned up by nightfall, we sent out a search party. We found his plane crashed in the desert and Tom inside. We buried him two days ago. Who are you? Tom's wife. You can't let go, can you, Nick? Mum's been dead for 20 years. Well, you live with your ghost.
years ago, there were 10,000 head of cattle on Larapinta. Now there's half that number. Water holes dried up. This, the only bore left that's working. Out here, water's more precious than gold. If it hadn't been for the drought and the need to check the tank at Larapinta, I wouldn't have even known you were here. like when you run out of water. Tom said the lamb's a living thing. He said you could hear its heart beating. It's true. The land doesn't belong to us. We belong to it. Kid, you want to hop out and stretch your legs? Come on, team. This way. If I see another one of those lizards, I'll die. Thinking about Tom? Did you love him? Tom was a good mate. His wife and I were real close. She was a gem of a woman. Everyone around here loved her. It's been hard on the kids without their mother. I can understand. I reckon you do. I wouldn't mind if you told me to mind my own business either. <laughs> We all expected Tom and Mary again eventually. He's quite a catch. Meg Stenning tried real hard. Is she any relation to Meg Stenning? Sister. I realize that must have come as quite a shock to everyone. Yep. Especially Tom's girls. Anyway, they can go on staying with Ralphie and me until we manage to contact Tom's sister in America. She and her husband are on holiday somewhere. Feeling we're uh, trespassers. Oh, rubbish. Don't suppose you've had a chance to give much thought to what you're going to do. Go home. There's a problem. I don't have any money. It's awful here. There's nothing to do. Nothing to look at. Not even the sound of a car going by. The pits, Marty, and it's so hot. It's like being inside of an oven. Well, we'll be going home soon. Thank God. I kind of feel sorry for Mom, though. Me, too. Mrs. Shackleton, how many wells did Lara Pinta have? Once it was an even dozen. Each one costing between 25, 50,000, depending on how deep you have to drill. It's a fortune. Yep. Out here, when the creeks and dams dry up, you depend totally on sub-artesian water. It's all there is until it rains. Where's the standing ranch? It's on the other side of those ranges. They own Cutter Cutter. Old man Stenning rules over 4,000 square miles of the best cattle country in the territory, like a king. He's a bit of an old so-and-so, but we all pay him homage out of habit. <laughs> His son Nick was the crown prince, but he ended up the black sheep instead. We better be getting back. There's a dust storm blowing in. Kids! Dust storm coming! Here, come on. Oh, wait, my friends call me Auntie Dear.
Jesus, are you all right? Oh, I'll take more than a dust storm to kill me. You better get inside. Aren't you coming in? Oh, I'm going to make a run for it, Kate. I've got a sick husband at home, and I don't like to leave him alone too long. Yeah. Well, what about Ellen and Zoe? Well, I was wondering if you'd mind keeping him with you overnight. I'll pick him up tomorrow. Well, I don't mind, but will they? Probably. Right. <laughs> And uh, a lot will depend on what your Aunt Molly wants to do. I guess that means that you guys will be coming back to the States with us. Doesn't your aunt live in Malibu? you got married. I bet you thought he was rich. Well, he wasn't. No, it, it wasn't like that. We can look after ourselves. We don't want you here. Larry Pitt is our home. It belongs to us. Of course it does. Your old man and our mom really liked each other. I don't believe you. And we liked him too. Why don't you just go back to America and leave us alone? I knew your father had money problems before we got married. And I don't intend touching a single cent of his estate. I'll be, uh, contacting friends back home. They'll, they'll loan us the money for a return airfare. But until that happens and until your futures are decided, we just have to put up with each other. We don't really have any choice. Your father wanted us to be a family. Now, for his sake, we could at least try and be friends for the time that's left. probably won't need dinner. Not if you've already eaten. Oh, Mom, it's not funny. They carry all kinds of diseases. I mean, I could die. You're going to be fine. You know, honey, I hate to say it, but to use an Aussie expression, you're becoming a bit of a whinger. Well, a little bit. It's a difficult time for all of us. Let's only let a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? Make use of the time that's left. Take photos for your friends back home. Not every day that an American gets to come to Australia. 
Everything will be great once we're home in California. I hope so. Okay, I give up. What's a winja? Someone who never stops complaining. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm trying. Try harder. Mom, how do people live without TV? I don't know, honey. Must be hell for them. Yeah. The generator switches itself off every day between 2 and 5. And then again from 10 to 6 in the morning. It's because diesel feels so expensive. Thank you for letting me know. Thanks for the lamp. Okay, I think. Good for you. Would you mind if the girls stayed with you a bit longer? It helped me out with Ralphie being crook. Fine. Kate, I ring it to ask you to a barbecue. What, you mean a barbie? Yeah. On Sunday, it's open house. People will be coming from all over. Tom's friends. Andy, dear, I I'm not sure I could cope. Rubbish. You're the guest of honour. They're coming to meet you. And to kick in for your fares home. It's a way we have of raising money out here. I couldn't accept charity. It's not charity. They're doing it for Tom. Don't disappoint him. at the Shackleton's on Sunday to farewell the Hannon widow. This is going on. Very wise decision on the lady's part. <laughs> what else would she do? She wouldn't know a steer from a kangaroo. <laughs> What'd you tell the Shackleton's? I said we're busy. No, we're not. Now she's leaving, I'm curious to see the kind of woman Tom Hannon married. back 30 years. Still knocks me about. <laughs> I just hope heaven's cooler. She probably told you I got cancer. Don't be embarrassed. I like to have it out in the open. Saves people whispering around you. That's a real pain in the neck. Ralph, who 
everything. Ed Stenning, his daughter, Meg. There's a son as well, Nick. What about the feud between the Herons and the Stennings? Around here, it's a bit of a legend. Personally, I think it's bloody silly, the whole thing. A load of nonsense. Good night. Kate, meet Henry Dingwell. Tom's lawyer. Hello. Like I always said, Ralph, Tom had great taste in cattle and women. <laughs> now, listen, for a bloke who's supposed to be dying, you're looking pretty bloody healthy, mate. I like to keep them all guessing, Henry. Well, you're succeeding. <laughs> uh, Kate, I thought if it's convenient, I'll drive down and we can sort out all that legal business, eh? Brian, he come for Stennings. Kate, watch out for me. She can be a real... What's the name? I only asked him to come because I thought they'd be good for a touch. <laughs> Don't have to curtsy or anything. As for you, you sit... Before you collapse. Don't fuss. Don't argue. Oh, um, Kate, there's the Stennings. This is Ed Stenning and his daughter, Meg. Hello. Hello. Sorry about your husband, Mrs. Hannon. Must have been quite a shock. Anyhow, you're doing the right thing, heading back to America. The outback's no place for a woman on her own. Life here is very different from California. Have you been to California, Miss Stenning? Sure. But I can't say I was all that impressed. I found it very superficial. That's an honest vulgarity. I really wouldn't know. What, the vulgarity or the honesty? Come on, maybe we mustn't monopolize Mrs. Henry. Henry, you got a minute? Sure. Bye, have a safe trip. Thank you. I'm so glad I came. Henry, here's my formal offer for the Lara Pinto. There's a check in there, down payment. See the lady gets it. Ed, Kate Hannon hasn't told me officially yet she's selling. She'll sell. What else can she do? should we? Do as you're told. Now there's a turn up to the books. I'm giving you Lara Pinta. expect to see you here, Mr. Stenning. Like I said last time we met, I never know your luck. I just wanted to say how sorry I am about Tom. He was a good man. I didn't know when I took you to Lara Pinta. Thank you. How do you feel? Well, like everyone's favorite charity. Does that worry you? Well, it's worried yourself and two children for the past 12 years, yeah. It does. They mean well. I know that. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. Allow me. Running away. I don't know what the Australian equivalent to go to hell is, Mr. Senning, but I wish you would. Excuse me. Tom Hannon loved Lara Pinter. It was a great property once, and it could be again. This drought cannot go on forever. If you go running back to the States like some frightened little rabbit, my father will take it over like he's taken over everything else in his life. Would you please let go of me? I don't see that it's any of your damn business. I can't even imagine what you're doing here, Mr. Stenning.
my contribution to the fund. Good luck, Mrs. Hannah. Mom, come quickly. They're killing Marty. You two. Come on, get up. Now shake hands. Go on, Donna. I'm okay, Ma. All right, come on. The show's over. No serious damage. I'll be the judge of that, Mr. Stanley. Well, at least someone in your family is a fighter. G'day. What do you want? I'm Bert Simpson. This is me dad. Your old man owed us money. For looking for water. I'm sorry. I... See, my dad's a water diviner. Best in the business. Your husband had me under contract for weeks. Dowson. I got it all written down. My husband. 
husband's dead. Yeah. Bloody shame. I can't help you. You'll have to talk to his lawyer. Hey, come on now. I heard you got a bucket of money today. Nice party, was it? We want our money. Right now. I don't have it. Call Henry Dingwell. I want that bloody money. No one cons me. I keep a rifle here. If you come back here again, I'll use it. Now get out of here. What it comes down to is this. Tom didn't leave too much in the way of cash. Apart from the 200000 he borrowed from his sister. That money is in a special account at Glen Warren. Now, Lara Pinter's carrying a pretty hefty mortgage. And the logical move seems to be to put it up for sale. No, it's ours. You've got no right to sell it. <sighs> Sit down, Zoe. I don't want to go to America. Lara Pinter's our home. Oh, we don't even know Auntie Molly. You don't even know where she is. Why don't we let Mr. Dingwall finish? We'll discuss this later. Right, now, someone's already made an offer for the place. And it's not real bad, all things considered. Who? Ed Stenning. I'm holding his check with a formal offer to purchase. Why does he want it? Because he hates it. Well, he hated the whole Hannon family. Getting hold of Lara Pinter means he's wiped them out. Oh, uh, <clears throat> We found this in the plane with Tom, and I thought you might like to have it. It's his diary. Meeting Kate is the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. I'm honored she's agreed to be my wife. I'm grateful that my girls will have the mother they've needed so badly for so long. We'll be a family again. And I pray to God that in time, Kate will regard Lara Pinta as home. tell you I've made a decision. Under the circumstances, I believe it's what's best for all of us. We're going to stay on here, for the time being anyway, and we're going to keep this place running. I expect you all to make an effort to get along. It'll be less tough on everyone. That's not fair. I make the rules here. When you're 18, you go where you like, you do what you like. But for now, it's my way. I hope that's clearly understood by everyone. You? Well, it all depends on why you're here, Mrs. Hannon. I'm returning your check. Lara Pinta isn't for sale. I've decided to stay. <laughs> that makes sense. I intend to keep Lara Pinta running. All by yourself? How are you going to survive? We're going to find water. You don't have the money to drill. I'll get it. We can wait, Mrs. Hannon, but the delay is going to cost you. You'll be out of here in a month. Excuse me. Mrs. Hannon? 
You haven't got a hope in hell. We'll see. Strike me, hooray. You're going to stay on. Well, for the time being, at least. I'll give it a go. some extra groceries. Congratulations on your decision to stay. Hope it was the wrong one. This must be the first time a Stenning has been on Lara Pinder without having his head blown off. One way or another. What happened to your garden? Don't ask. Where are the children? Outside. None of them look too happy. Nick, can I ask you something? Sure. Tom Stockman, how do I go about finding them? They've gone back to their camp. I could fly you up there in the morning. If you could see your way clear for me to stay here tonight. An awful lot to learn, isn't there? A hell of a lot. You'll be the talk of the territory before the week's out. One woman, four kids, no money, and only one boar left. I rang. You never know your luck. Well, I happen to think it's important to take risks. So you are a gambler. I'm learning. What happens if you lose? I can't afford to lose. Kate, you must drill for water. You can't survive with only one bore. What if it goes dry? I know. I was thinking of asking Henry Dingwall if he'd release some of that money Tom borrowed from his sister Molly. Well, do it. As soon as you can. Thanks for putting me up. You're welcome. Nick. Why are you helping us? I just want to see you get it right. You want another reason? For you.
Simo, he was a good diviner in his day. <laughs> Could find water in the middle of the Sahara. But he didn't try drinking it for change. Mick. Oh, George. I've had a good look at that mess out there. You're a lucky man. Yeah, she saved my life. Good work. Officer Bond. Uh, please, George. Simo was by the other day with his son. They threatened me, said Tom owed them money. But it just doesn't seem reason enough for them to do something like this. Yeah, unless someone put them up to it. Any idea who? Well, I'll need a statement from both of you, but uh, it can wait a day or two there. Better get you checked out at the hospital. You had breakfast? Yeah, thanks. You know, blowing up a ball's about the worst thing you can do in the outback, in the middle of a drought. Poetic justice. Simo copping it that way? Well, I'll be in touch. Come on, mate. You know, you could uh, always take up nursing if things don't work out. It's got to work out. Dingle. G'day. Now, things down there. I need part of that 200000 Molly loaned Tom. Simo blew up her last bore last night. Hell. I can't survive without water. I need to drill. You probably heard. I'm staying. Yes. Well? Well, it's going to be tricky, Kate. That money's frozen. Well, then unfreeze it. Henry, Tom borrowed that money for just this purpose. It's what he would have wanted. Oh, it's not going to be easy. Henry, I need that new bore. Well, you leave it to me and I'll see what I can do. Good morning. It isn't a social visit. I didn't expect it would be. We heard you had trouble. News travels fast. Well, Simo always had a grudge against your husband. Any man that blasts a well doesn't deserve to live. Why don't you get to the point, Mr. Stenning? There are pretty dying, Miss Hennon. Your herd's half starved and your valley's a dust bowl. I told you. It's not for sale. What the hell do you know about running a cattle station? I'll learn. Dad's a man who's used to getting his own way. I think he'll be disappointed this time. If you think my brother can help you, you're wasting your time. He'll let you down like he's let everyone down who's ever depended on him. We'll be talking, Miss Anna. Go home. Save yourself a lot of trouble.
What did we tell you about the Stennings? What about Tom Stockman, Gillian and Jamie? Nick said that they went back to their tribe. They won't work without a boss. Well, they got one. How do I go about finding them? Well, you couldn't. Not by yourself. Their camp's more than a hundred miles from here. Okay? Thanks for coming with me, Zoe. I couldn't have found the camp without you. Your father talked about Gilly. He said they were tribal brothers. Is that right? They grew up together. You must have known her most of your life. Yeah. for you to come back home to Lara Pinta. You're not selling to Boss Denning. No, Gilly. But we can't run it on our own. Otherwise, we will have to sell. We need you, Gilly. Both of you. We do. Very much. Please, Gilly. Come home. Okay. <laughs> We just found him out in the pen. He's only a few days old. His mother's dead. And we want to keep him. He's so cute. This little guy will be ours. All right. It's time for school. Oh, it's such a dumb way to do lessons. Come on. from town and we don't have any money so the four of you will just have to cope as best you can anyway you're not alone children all over the outback go to school like this I wish I was at boarding school now we'll begin by calling the roll starting with the A's we'll call Tina and Marty Adamson from Larapinta station Marty if you can hear us will you please say yes when we call your name over come on we don't have all day calling our new Australians Tina and Marty Adamson from the USA. Hi. That's fine. Hello, Marty. I'm an American, and I'll always be an American. Of course. I'll say it again. How much you get out of this is up to you. 
I can't be here all the time to supervise your lessons. And I can't make you study. You can sit here and stare at the wall for six hours each day. It's your choice. Mrs. We should be branding new calves real soon. Maybe a good idea to muster too, before any more trouble comes. I'll just leave it up to you, Gilly. Do whatever has to be done. Let's keep our fingers crossed we've seen the last of trouble. We need help for the mustering. Well, I'm trying to borrow some money. When I have it, we'll talk about this again. I told you there could be a problem. Without Tom's sister's official OK, the bank will not release the money. Not a cent. But I tried to ring you before you left. We still can't locate her. She could be in Timbuktu for all we know. How about a normal bank loan? Well, I've been trying. Henry, you were Tom's friend. The repenter was his life. Help me to save it. Kate, it was... I've never begged for a thing in my life. I'm begging now. I need money to fight Ed Stenning. Don't let us down, please. I'll try. I won't give in. I can't, not this time. Look, here's to staying put. I'm sure it isn't to inquire about Dad's health. Or mine, for that matter. All right, Meg. Did the old man have anything at all to do with dynamiting Kate Hannon's ball? Absolutely not. Is that the truth? Yes. He had nothing to do with it. Any idea who did? No. He wants Lara Pinter. And we both know why. And I bet you couldn't wait to tell her about that water. No. I didn't mention it. I may spend the rest of my life regretting it. Meek, swear to me that neither of you had anything to do with blowing that ball. You're bloody concerned about the Hannons all of a sudden. Or is it just her? Swear. My word of honor. Satisfied? I know you'll forgive me for dashing off. I'm meeting Dad in Alice Springs. He's the last of a breed, Nick. A giant. What a pity you're nothing like him. Well, Nicholas, old friend, fancy seeing you here. Henry? How are you? Fine, thank you. You going to Alice Springs? Yes. You going? <laughs> no, mate, one of the kids is sick. What's happening? Something special? Mrs. Hannon. Kate, hello. I thought you wasn't coming. I wouldn't miss it for the world, mate. I have a special stake in this camel cup. 
This is Farouz. Oh. Oh. Hi. My, isn't he handsome? He is a sheep. <laughs> this camel cut sell every year. We get people coming from all over the place, even overseas. The camels aren't indigenous to Australia, are they? No, they came here in the 1880s. They were used for transport in the outback. They carted stuff to the Western Australian gold fields, and now there are thousands of them. We even export them to Saudi Arabia. Really? Is she yours? No. She's mine. I bought it seven months ago, and I've been in training ever since. Well, for what? I'm going to ride her. Aren't you glad you came? Eight minutes, race time. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Camel Cup. A quick rundown of acceptances on race one. Number one is Jock's Joy, written by Nummy Mixer. And number two, Harry, written by Jay Ledger. William Walker, written by Johnny Fine. Number four, Courage, Jay Smith. Number five, Fool for Love. Six, Churchill, Argyll. Seven, The Conqueror, Neil Jacobs. Nine, Foxy Locks. Ten, Miss Bobbin. Eleven, Muscles. And twelve, North Pride. Written by the ever popular Jerry Johnson. That's a setting start and uh, very dangerous for handlers as the uh, camels jump away. Racing! And the first up was Jock's Joy. He was hard pressed by two to the North Pride. Jerry Johnson doing a great job. Here comes Harry William Walker's coming around the outside. Full for Love's back looking down. Here comes the Cobra. Let out in front is Jock's Joy. He's streaked away. He's three legs in front of the Cobra. The Cobra's waiting for the light. on us coming. I didn't think it was a very good idea. I still don't. Shush. Don't shush me. The doctor says you ought to be in bed. Well, I'm not going to bed. I want to be where there's people, where there's a bit of life. You can see what I've got to put up with. Whose hat? <laughs> Nick Stanning's. I can with him. Why not? Did you know he's got a camel in, in the cup? Yes. Peruse. The one with the false eyelashes. <laughs> he's riding her. Personally, I think he's crazy. Did he mention his old man's got a camel running as well? No, he didn't. Everybody knows about it from the hours down to Adelaide. It's not every day you see a Stenning competing against a Stenning. Good day, Mrs. Hannon. Good day. Howdy, dear. Ralph? Good day, Frank. I need a beer. Nikki! Nikki! <laughs> God, you look gorgeous. If you want me to drop by your tent after the race, I'm available. Come on, tell Valentino we said good luck. Take care, Kate. Must be the outfit. Yes. You look very dashing. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? I thought I might look like a bit of a galah, but it's okay. Come on, I'll find you a spot where you can see the race. I don't know. Wait here a minute. Are you crazy? None of your business. You'll kill yourself. The hell I will. What are you trying to prove? He doesn't have to prove himself to anyone. Dad's riding Napoleon himself, and I'll bet on him against you any day. You're wasting your money. We'll see. In announcing the status for the uh, big one, the Camel Cup, ladies 
What's the matter? I hope you break your neck. As you can see, we're a very close family. Where do you think you're going? Um, well, I looked for you to say goodbye, but uh, you had your arms full again. I'm driving back with the Shackleton. I already talked to them. I told them I'd drive you. I have a little place of my own in town. I hoped you might accept an invitation to dinner. Set the table. I'll do. It's not what I expected. My home away from home. Nick, what is it between you and your father? My mother was originally from Melbourne. She. Loved art. She knew a lot about music. She read a lot. And he was very different from any man she'd ever met. I think she loved him. He loved her very much at the beginning. And it all changed. 
I don't know why I never knew why. I just know that I came home one day and she was drunk and bruised, awfully beaten up. He'd nearly killed her. The drinking got worse after that and she died, an alcoholic. old. I suppose that's why I've never married. I don't think it would be right to ask anyone to live with that anger. Perhaps it's a question of letting go. Something we all have to do eventually. I mean, we'll always love Tom. I'll be grateful. Yeah. When they were presenting me with the cup today, I saw my father standing there in the crowd, and he, he saluted me. I still have a lot of letting go to do. Thanks for today.
feeling guilty about selling off Tom's tears. It's what Tom would have done. It's the only thing that makes any sense. It's the only practical thing to do. The money you get from those steers may see you through the drought. You can know your luck. Once a jolly swang man can't buy a bill of bond. Under the shade of a cool apart tree And he sang as he watched and waited till his people walked You come a-waltzing Matilda with me Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda You come a-waltzing Matilda with me And he sang as he watched and waited till his baby walked You come a-waltzing Matilda with me Glad I'm not in love. Shut up, Marty. Bingo. I knew it. I knew he'd write. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, my beating heart. Be quiet. Well, I'm glad I'm not in love, that's all. There you go. Here. Oh, good. This one from Adelaide from my old school. Still no word from Aunt Molly. I'm glad. The guy's got a new guitarist. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess it's showbiz, huh? Yep. I wish I were dead. I mean, what happened? Billy says it's over. He met someone else. Checked the tanks this morning. Three, maybe four days water left. And nothing. Who is it? It's me, Tina. You want to talk? Sorry about Billy. How old is he? Seventeen. Nearly eighteen. Really? What's him? What's him? Wow, he's really nice looking. I hate him. Me too. It's okay. It'll be all right. Are you all right? Yes. Probably just crawled in looking for water. I'd better get cleaned up. 
If you need me, I'll be over there. Thanks. You'll feel better in the morning. Marty, have my breakfast. You can play with them later. I wouldn't take the milk. Let me stop you. Oh. Mm. So, who's lending me the money? Uh. <clears throat> Here. There we are. All legal and above board, okay? That's very little interest. You complaining? I got you the money. You probably would have robbed a bank if I hadn't. Sign. Right here. Excuse me. Wait. I'd like to talk to you. Alone. I'll get on with the shopping. Meg, I know there have been ill feelings between the Stennings and the Hannons in the past. But I'd like to change that. Kiss and make up. Is that what you're saying? Something like that. Especially when it's your lover's family. You hate Nick, don't you? Hmm? Nick isn't worth hating. But thanks for the olive branch. I'll tell Dad. It'll give him a good laugh. Pinter. I bet Nick's behind it. Maybe. Dad, Malu's the best water diviner in the territory. What if he finds that underground lake? Tom oh, Hannah never found it. Leave it alone. No.
Yeah, but why isn't he divining on the site of the old wells? He says the subartesian table's nearly finished. He's looking for a new source. How long will that take? Do you think this survey could be wrong? The geologist has been studying that terrain for months. If he says there's an underground lake down there, you better believe it. What are you grinning at? Oh, I was just thinking how much money you had to pay to get a survey done without anyone knowing. Now some old aborigine could get the same result for a few dollars. She'll never sell once she hits that lake. That's the way it turns out. We'll bear it. I've survived worse. We have to do something. You'll do nothing. Nick's still at Lara Pinta. Helping her. Sorry, Kate. It's as deep as we can go. Billy? Are you sure that this is where Marlow said to dig? Sure is, Nick. house and the most expensive <laughs> I think we should have a toast to us to all of us and to the future to the future, to the future. water now for both families. Till the rains come. It was his feud and Tom's, not ours. Will you? Kate. I love you.
Where's Nick going? Oh, well, he's got a charter flight to Ayers Rock. <laughs> American tourists. How you feeling? The truth? Sure. I'd rather be home. I know. It takes time. Well, Marty, you're still holding the reins too high. Sort of. Come on, Emma, let's race. This is Pegasus, he can fly. Of our new boar. Don't do this, Kate. Just whose lawyer are you, Henry? Ed Stennings or mine? Well, you know the answer to that, but it's my job to advise you, and you don't have sufficient proof. Marty saw him. He still had the dynamite in his hand. What more do you just, want? Just calm down, Kate. It's Marty's word against Ed's, and the charge won't stick. Then make it stick. Henry, it's all gone. I have to do something. Ed can hire an army of the state's top lawyers if he chooses. He'll tie you and Marty into knots. But I'm telling the truth, Mr. Dingwell. It's okay. <sighs> okay, well, let's... Let's confront him. Let's threat him with a law case that'll blow the state wide apart. It's worth a shot, Kate. Someone dynamited the new boar. Marty saw them. It was your father. Mom went to Glenmore to talk to Henry Dingwall and the police. I've never seen her so angry. Nick, it's all so terrible.
did you dynamite Kate Hennon's ball? No. Liar! I never lied to you, Nick, about anything. Kate's boy, Marty, said he saw you there. He did. I heard an explosion. I drove over to see. That's all. I swear. On what? My mother's grave. Oh, God. It always come back to that. Huh? Doesn't it? I really didn't want to believe you'd go this far. Are you finished? No. Not quite. Kate Hannon has gone to the police. I won't be able to buy your way out of this one, mate. Well, if that's the way it's going to be, and as long as we're talking the truth, let's drag it all out. Let's talk about your mother. It's long overdue. What do you mean? I'm too old to live with your hate any longer, Nick. I didn't lie to you about blowing up that bore, but I lied about your mother. Your mother was everything I wasn't. There's a picture of it, see? Your mother and I, on our wedding day. Sure, sure, we were happy for a while. But after you and Meg were born, she changed. She started to drink. Hurt like hell to watch her, but I didn't understand how to help. She left home many times. I always tried to come up with an excuse for you and Meg to explain why she wasn't here. And then I heard she'd been seeing other men. So, I flew to Adelaide and begged her to come home. I still loved her, you see, but she said she didn't give a damn about anything. Not me, not you, not Meg. No. Finally, she came home. One day, I was out mustering, came home early. I found her on the floor covered in blood. She'd been entertaining another man. Tom Hannon's father. He's beaten her up and just left her there. I remember you coming into the room, looking at her, the broken doll. I remember your little boy's face looking at me, and you thinking I'd done it. What was I going to tell you? There isn't a day goes by, and I still don't think about her. Love dies hard, Nick. Like hate. Uh, lady, you can't go in there. Mr. Stenning, I want to speak to you. Kate, he didn't blow up the ball. Marty saw him. He still had the dynamite in his hand. How can you defend him? He's my father, and he's telling the truth. Kate. Oh, you're a Stenning, all right. How could I think you'd be any different? And don't worry about the money, Nick. I'll pay you back. Every cent. Kate!
But there was smoke. Lots of smoke. You said so yourself. Yes, but the wind blew it away. Just like that. Yes. How far was Mr. Stenning from you? 20, maybe 25 feet. I don't know. You don't know? You can remember that the smoke cleared suddenly, but you don't know how far away he was. Well, I couldn't tell exactly. Perhaps you couldn't tell because the sun was in your eyes. Objection, Your Worship. That's not been established. He's right, Mr. Austin. Your mother doesn't like the Stennings, does she, son? She doesn't hate them all. Oh? And which one does she like? Nick. A lot? I see. Kate Hannon likes Nick Stenning. A lot. <laughs> Jetson! Explain your line of questioning, Mr. Austin. If my client were jailed, his son, Nick Stenning, would take over Cutter Cutter. That would be a blessing for Mrs. Hannon. Her own property is in trouble, and she needs a friendly neighbor to help her out. Mom, make him stop. That isn't true. Isn't it? She really likes Nick. We all do. That's enough. He's only a boy. Order. But you did buy dynamite. Well, I'll keep dynamite for clearing, gouging dams. Answer the question, Mr. Stenning. Did you buy dynamite a few weeks before the Lara Pinta ball was blown up? Yes. Well, the man who sold it to you remembers very clearly. He's even uh, given us a statement. He thought it was rather strange that you, uh, you bought so much dynamite. And he asked you what you needed it for. What did you tell him, Mr. Stenning? Uh, clear some rock. Uh -huh. And did you clear rock? I uh, hadn't got around to it. You kept that dynamite all those weeks and you didn't use it. Isn't that a little unusual? Uh, there are more important things to worry about. Or were you saving it for something else? Objection. Uh, Ed, are you all right? Yeah. Our scientific report it proves that the dynamite bought by Ed Stenning was used to blow up the Hammond well. Order in the court, order! Now, I've considered the evidence that's been placed before this court, and it's my determination that a prima facie case against Edward Clive Stenning has been established. Order. Order, please. I shall therefore recommend to the Director of Public Prosecutions that Edward Clive Stenning be charged under the appropriate section of the Northern Territory Crimes Act. You did this. I hope you're satisfied. Not asleep. How do you feel? I'll live. Will you be staying around for a while? Yeah. I think I might. Meg was behind it all. You know that, don't you? What are you going to do? It depends. On Kate Hannon? Yep. She's quite a woman. Yes, she is. I said, Carl, sleep a bit. Good night, Dad.
manage to get any sleep? No. Likewise. Well, what a bloody mess this whole thing is, isn't it? Well, I'll be out of it soon. It's over. They've beaten us. Well, Henry, it's a long drive. Just about a reason. Well, Nick's... Nick's my mate. Don't blame him, Kate. I don't know anything anymore. I wish we'd never come to this place. They hate us. What, Nick? Nick loves you, Kate. How's Ed Stenning? Well, he's not so good. When he's well enough, he'll have to face trial. I know I should not feel this way. But I get so angry with myself. But damn it, I feel so guilty. for you to get Lara Pinta. You were going to let them send me to jail? If it had gone to trial, I'd have owned up. Well, can't you see what would happen if Nick married that woman? A Hannah would get cut a cutter. It's up to Nick. He's my heir. I've spent my life looking after you, taking care of this place. What's he done? He's my son. If Mary Phil, you could do a lot worse. Cutter Cutter belongs to me. I've earned it. And no one can prove I did anything. Not even you. Get out. Dad! Man is born of woman, is a few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and withers. He passes like a shadow and does not stay. In the midst of life, we are in death. The days of man are as of grass. He flourishes as a flower in the field. And when the wind goes over it, it is gone. And its place will know it no more. Friends, we are gathered here to commit the body of our brother, Edward Stenning, to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. to hand it to you, Nick. You really got to Dad, didn't you, before he died? Well, I'll fight you. This is your home, Meg. I expect you to live here as you've always done. What about Kate Hannon? 
That's my business. The hell it is. I won't allow that woman to set foot in this place. Well, there's not much chance of that now. You hated her from the moment she got here, didn't you, Meg? Yes. Because of Tom. A jumped-up waitress with a nose for a dollar. She didn't deserve him. Yes, I love Tom Hannon. He was the only man I ever loved. I'll be glad when she's gone. The sooner she's out of all our lives, the better. Poor Meg. I wish that was true. You're sick, Meg. I wish I could help. I don't think anybody can anymore. Well, go then. I was, I was getting bored with you anyway. You'll never get another job around here. I'll see to it. Tell Nick I said goodbye. <laughs> She's nice. Sort of like Tom, but kind of American. Sort of a mixture. You'll like her, really. Are there horses in Los Angeles? Maybe not right in the middle of LA, but out of it, sure. You guys will gotta go to Disneyland. Time for bed. Come on, Blue.
Is Marty gonna die? Don't quit on me. Please. I need you. We've been through some tough times. We've always come through, haven't we? Try, Marty. Try. 
my heart. Excuse me, please, Mrs. Lee. Just following the doctor's orders. Hello, everyone. This is a very special broadcast. Children from farms and cattle stations right through central Australia are all standing by their radios at this very minute to send an extra special cheerio to a friend and fellow pupil. Marty, we hope you can hear us. This is for you. After he heard about Marty, he left for Karaka. He wanted to know when you were leaving. I've been waiting for you. Meg, hasn't there been enough? I thought the fire would do it for me. I don't like leaving things unfinished. I blew your precious boar as well. I paid Simo to wreck the first one. Why? If it hadn't been for you, Tom would have married me. You only knew him a couple of weeks. I knew him all my life. When his wife died, I was, I was pleased. But I wanted to give him time. So I waited. Meg, please. Now it's Nick. Well, you'll never get Cutter Cutter. It belongs to me. I don't want Cutter Cutter. Meg, don't do this. I'll not with you. <laughs> Will I? You're not very popular around these parts. Over there. Oh! We must be 
month before they find your body. There's hundreds of water holes around here and they're filling up fast. Rain mean the end of the drought? <laughs> and peace, my fly. Now, Kate, it'll have to rain for at least a couple of weeks, and we'd need more after that. George Merman reckons it'll clear up. I'm surprised the children are still asleep. Oh, after everything that's happened, they were exhausted. What do you suppose will happen to Meg? It'll be a trial, I guess. Despite everything, I can't help feeling sorry for her. Me too. You know, Kate, all day had always dreamed Lara Pinter and Cutter Cutter would be joined one day. When I talked to Nick on the phone about what's happened, he still had the bloody silly notion you might be heading back for California. Anyway, if you're interested, I can tell you where to find him. I'm gonna have to climb this damn hill every time I want to see you. Okay. 